Christmas music. It's too early for Christmas music. I actually I actually specialize in Christmas music. Ooh, I'm excited then. But you gotta wait till December for that. Oh, you guys used to play this in elementary school, right? Yeah. yeah. Front row, you didn't watch out. No! That's not correct. Chemistry, we do sig figs now. In mathematics, we assume everything to be exact. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, so make sure you know how to use the memory. Although, you don't have to, but then you, what are you going to do? Write it on your paper and then punch it all in? I hope not. All right, number four. Okay, all you have to do is use the midpoint formula on this. Can you guys draw a picture, yes or no? Yes. You know, when you do analytic geometry problems, you, you have to start by drawing a picture. And it doesn't have to be nice. Let's do it quickly. D is 7, 3. Here's D. 7, comma. See how I don't go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3. Just, just approximate, right? Uh, e, 10, 9. Where would 10, 9 be? Somewhere over here? What, what letter is that? E. 10, comma, 9. And F, 5, 5. Where would 5, 5 be? 5, 5 would be somewhere over here. What is that called? F. Now, these are the midpoints of the side of the triangle. So what does the actual triangle look like? Let's see. Something like this? I mean, just, just, something like that? Doesn't even look like the midpoint, but it doesn't matter, right? Just make the dot bigger. <laughs> That's what I do. So find the coordinates of A, B, and C. So which one is A? D is the midpoint of AB, so this has got to be A, B, and C. Now, do we know the coordinates of A? That's what we're trying to find, so what should I call it? What do you want to call it? X1, Y1? Yeah, sure. A, I comma, B? X1, Y1. M, comma, N? You want to go Greek letters, alpha, comma, beta? Yeah. Pick something sure. and go with it. No, okay, A and B then. And then shall we go with C and D? And then E and F? And then you just start writing equations. So if this is the midpoint of these two points, what equations can I write? What, what's the formula for midpoint? A plus C over 2 got to equal 7. B plus D over 2 equals 3. Isn't that the midpoint formula? That's all you got to know. OK, and what about these then? So using these two points, what can I write? C plus E over 2 equals 10. F plus D over 2 equal 9. And then finally, using these two points with that as its midpoint, A plus E over 2 equal 5, and B plus F over 2 equal 5. Solve. Now, when you come out of Algebra 1, you should be experts at solving two equations, two variables, right? When you come out of Algebra 2, you should be experts at solving three equations and three variables. And when you come out of pre-calculus, you should be experts at solving n equations and n variables. And you will be, but I'll teach you how to do that in the, we're going to use our calculator. Like, what if you go to college and you're going to solve 15 equations, 15 variables, what are you going to do? No, you use your calculator. I'll show you how to do it, but we're going to learn that in the third quarter. Now, do you want me to practice, I mean, show you how to do Algebra 2 here? Because some of you, you're rusty. 
Okay, like right here. You got three equations, three variables. Over here is also three equations, three variables. Okay, I'll do one of them for you. Which one? The left or the right? Left. Okay, left. Okay, this is what I would do. I'll look at that and go a plus c equals 14. And then that one, multiply by 2. c plus e equals 20. And then that one, a plus e equals 10. Right? To get rid of the fractions. Now, when you solve three equations, three variables, the first thing you want to do is eliminate one of the variables. Which variable do you want to eliminate? C. Just pick one and go with it. A. Okay, I heard C the first yeah. time. So look at these two equations. What can I do to eliminate the C? Should I add them or subtract them? Subtract. Yeah, subtract. So if you subtract, you get A minus E equal negative 6, right? In fact, let's write it right below this one. A minus E equal negative 6. Now look at these two equations. Okay. Now you're down to two equations, two variables, that's algebra one. And what did your algebra one teach you to teach you? You want to eliminate one of the variables. Which one? Either A or E. It's easy because look, if you add the equations, the E's cancel out. If you subtract, the A's cancel out. So what do you want to do? Add or subtract? 50, 50, check. Add. Okay, add. 2A equal 4, A equal 2. Once you get A equal 2, plug it back into one of these, E got to equal. Rhymes with me. A. A. <laughs> And then once you get this, go back to here. So if A is 2, what does C have to be? 12. 12. There you go. Boom. So you guys got to practice getting good at algebra. So I showed you how to do this one. You guys do that one. That's fair, right? All it is is solving equations, man. This is where you're going to beef up your algebra skills. Five. Because when you go to calculus, your algebra skills have to be good. excellent. They can't be good. They've got to be excellent. Now, number five. Okay, do you want to draw a picture? Yeah, let's draw a picture. Of course we should be drawing a picture. Okay, negative three, one. <gasps> one, four. And four, three. Something like this. These three points are three vertices of a parallelogram. Find the coordinates of the fourth vertex. Now, before we even start this problem, do you know, can you see that there's going to be three answers? What if you only get one of them on the test? What are you going to do? What am I going to do? Minus seven. Well, if the problem's worth eight points, then nah, I think I'll just six. There should be three answers. Can you see where, okay, can you see where one answer would be? Zero, somewhere zero. over here, somewhere over here. Because look, parallelogram. But then, wouldn't, couldn't there be one, like, over here? Because look, parallelogram. But then, couldn't you have one, like, over here? Because look, parallelogram. So there's three answers. You have to find all three, right? Just like when you solve a quadratic equation, can you just give one of them? No, you gotta give both. You don't go negative b plus root square root of b squared minus 4c all over 2a, right? What about the minus one? If there's more than one solution, you have to give them all. So I will do one of them for you. Which one do you want me to do? Here, pick one. A, B, or C. <laughs> okay. Okay, A. So it's going to be somewhere over here, doesn't it? So here's a parallelogram. Now, if you want to, you can start writing equations. Like, in order for this to be a parallelogram, if you label this A comma B, what can you say about this side and this side? Which one? This side and that side. Same way. They have to be either equal or parallel, right? So you could write two equations. You can go the distance from here to here <coughs> got to equal to the distance from there to there, right? Using the distance formula. Yes. And then the distance from here to here got to equal to the distance from there to there and just solve those equations. Or you can use slope, right? Because if it's a parallelogram, right? They have to have the same slope. Or you could go, who's, what's that crinkling? Well, no crinkling. You guys can eat in class, but no crinkling. That sounds like when I go to a movie every time. I go to a movie. Somebody's crinkling in the back. <laughs> anyway, so the slope from here to here equals the slope from here to here. And then the slope from here to here equals the slope from there to there. And you can solve those equations. But there's a lot faster way. You want me to show you? Yes, this is a math team secret. secret. So it doesn't leave the room, except it's on the video. <laughs> Don't show this video to Kuno Ho or McKinley people. Okay? That's our basic uh, competitors. Now look, to get from this point to this point, what do I have to do? To get from this point to this point, what do I have to do? 
down I gotta go down one three. and write three, correct? Yeah. So to get from this point to this point, don't I have to go down one and three, right? Yeah. Right? Because it's a parallel. Okay. So just do that. So if I have this point, if I go one down and three right, where are you gonna be? That's a zero zero. Zero zero PC. Doesn't really look like it. <laughs> my picture is bad. But that doesn't matter. There you go. That's one of the answers. And just to show you, you. what about those? The other one. Okay, it's okay. I'm just gonna show you another. What am I drawing? Okay, where were the three points? Okay, it was here, here, and here. What if I want to find the one over here? Then you do the same thing. Look, look, you just draw this. Okay, so, so if I want to get to this point over here, you just ask yourself to get from here to here. What do I have to do? What do I have to do to get from there to there? How much right and how much up do I have to go? Look at this. You got to go four right and three up. So if I go four right. Three up there, that means to get from this point to that point, I gotta go four right and three up also. Then, yeah? And that's how you get the second answer. And then you do the same thing for the one on this side. It's three up. Huh? On, the, on our homework, it says only one, but you want to do all three. Were you here one minute ago? <laughs> I know. I said if you have a math problem and there's more than one solution, you have to give all solutions. You can't just give one of them. Well, you can, except you're gonna get blasted. On, it's going to be minus a whole bunch of points. Okay, next, number six. We're doing, we're doing a whole bunch of problems here. Number six. Find the value of k so that this line and the line, are we, you know, are we doing both 6a and 6b? Apparently, 3k and 5k are Parallel. Now, how do you tell if two lines are parallel? They have the same slope. So, the slope from here to here gotta be the same as the slope of this line. Now, what did you compute the slope of that line to be? What is the slope of this line? Three. Three. Good. So, therefore, for part A, shouldn't the slope from here to here be equal to three if they're gonna be parallel? They're gonna have the same slope. So, how do you compute slope? Y minus Y over X minus X. That's got to equal 3. Then just solve for k. That's easy, yeah? And then in part b, if you want them to be perpendicular, then what? The slope got to be? Negative. A negative reciprocal, right? So the slope from here to here, again, you go y minus y over x minus x, got to equal to the negative reciprocal of that slope, negative 1 third. And then just solve that equation. See, again, see, that's what you want to do. You want to write equations so that you should solve it. Number 7. Number 7. Find the area of around this. Okay, we gotta we're gonna draw a picture here. We need room. I just made it look like a double. So let's draw a picture. What do we got? What do we got? Negative one, negative one. <gasps> Nine, four. We somewhere over here. This is not the scale. Twenty comma six would be up here. Twenty comma six. And then ten comma one would be over here somewhere. Okay, so doom, 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 doom. that's a rhombus. Now what do you want to do? What, what do you think the fastest way to find the area of a rhombus? What did we learn in geometry? Hey, we learned the formula for the area of a rhombus. The diagonal. Yeah, something to do with the diagonals. What was it? Area of a rhombus is diagonal. one half the product of the diagonals. Now, what happens if you're on a quiz or a test and you can't remember that? You're done. No, you're not done. <laughs> How about break it up into two triangles? Triangle. That's what I do. Yeah, you break it up in, now, look, if I give you any triangle and you know the three vertices, what's the fastest way to find the area of a triangle? Heron's if you were in my summer, you can do Heron's formula. I would not suggest that. Box. Well, with a calculator you can, but without a calculator. Come on, if you were in my summer school class, we did this problem. Oh, the box. You make a box. Put a box around it like that. The area of the triangle is simply the area of this rectangle minus the three right triangles there. And then once you get that, then just double it, right? Because if it's a rhombus, that's a, that means it's a par parallelogram, right? Yeah. And if you draw in the diagonal of a parallelogram, doesn't it divide it into two congruent triangles? Yes. Yes. So just find the area of one of those and then double it. See, but there's always a way to figure it out, but of course there's always a most efficient way, which is this. One half the product of the diagonals. So let's do this. 
Okay, which diagonal do you want? I'll do this one. I'll do this one. So how do I find the length of this diagonal? Distance formula. So square root of the difference of the x is squared. You guys weren't practicing that like last time. One. Difference of the y's squared. Nine. So that's square root of ten, right? Okay, what about this diagonal here? Square root of difference of the x coordinates squared. So what's 21 squared? Come on, when you come out of elementary school, you're supposed to know all your square numbers up to 25. Oh, yeah. Well, that was true when I went to school. Difference of the x, the y coordinates squared? 49. 49. So what is that? Square root of? 490. 490. So that's one half square root of 4900. Hey, that's a perfect no, perfect square. What's the square root of 4900? 70. 70. Ooh. So the answer is 35. Bam. Are we serious? We don't know 21 squared is 441. Okay, then just go on the side and go like this. Then. 21 times 21. 1, 2, 2, 4. Oh, Whatever. Okay, number 8. Find the coordinate. Oh, come on. Okay, we're going to. Just okay, we'll try and squeeze it in over here. I'll tell you what, this problem is usually on the first quiz. I'll just tell you right now. Yeah, but we didn't learn that yet, yeah. Makani. Very. How, how did you know? Because You're finding uh, the, the circle center. Oh, but no, but where did you hear the word circle center? PSAT, right? Really? Like we did a problem with the circle center? Yeah, we talked about it different times. Oh. Well, how come you remember that then? Because <laughs> it's not 21 squared. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because this problem is like. Okay, anyway, we're, that's actually tonight's lesson. We're going to find the circle center tonight's lesson. Okay, all I, want, all I want you to do is use the, either the distance formula, the slope formula, or the midpoint point formula. That's all we're doing in this first homework. Mm -hmm. So, how do you figure out why did I even draw this triangle? Because Macaulay said the circumcentric. No. That's why. Spoiler. Okay, there we go. Where do you think a point would be where it would be equidistant from these three points? Wouldn't it be somewhere like over here? Sure. Okay, we don't know. What do you want to call it? A, B, H, K, X, Y? X, Y. And then. Okay, let's just go A, B then. What, what, whatever. Do whatever you want. What, what do you want to do then? You don't like A, B. And it shoulders. Happy face? Yeah. Happy face, not happy face? <laughs> okay, what does equidistant mean? It means this distance, that distance, and that distance are all equal. That's the definition of equidistant. So, is there a way I can find this distance, Mr. Park? See. Yeah, you use the distance formula. Square root of a plus 2 squared plus b minus 3 squared, right? Difference of the x squared plus difference of the y squared. Come on, after you did the homework, Mr. Parker, I'm looking at the problems for the first time now. <laughs> Feeling guilty now, huh? <laughs> Equals this distance, which is the square root of a minus 5 squared plus b minus 2 squared. And that's equal to this distance, which is the square root of a minus 6 squared plus b plus 1 squared. You write that down on your paper, you get one point. Whoa. This is on the test now. You want the other seven points? Now you gotta solve this. Now, do you want me to solve it for you? Yes. No, we're gonna help you. Now, do you guys even understand how to work with something like this? What What does it mean if A equals B equals C? What does, what does, what does, what does that even mean? It means A equals B. A equals C. A equals C. B equals C. So, Okay, which ones you want to do? Okay, I'll do one of them for you to get you started. Let's go A equal B right here. Okay, look at that. Watch what I do now. We're honors. We can do things in our head. Now, how do I get rid of the radical? Square, Square both sides and then multiply out both sides, right? Watch what I do. Watch and learn. Watch this. 4A plus 4. Well, here, I'll tell you what I do. 4A minus 6b plus 13 is equal to negative 10a minus 4b plus 29. <laughs> 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 Do you guys see what I just did? Yeah, I squared both sides and I multiplied it all up. Now when you multiply this out, you're going to get, here I'll write it up, 
a squared plus 4a plus 4 plus b squared minus 6b plus 9, correct? And then on this side, you're going to get a squared minus 10a plus 25 plus b squared minus 4b plus 4. So how did I get this? Because look, the a's cancel out, the b's cancel out, and then look, 4a minus 6b plus 13. You just do it in your head, because we're honors. Okay, don't just write this. I don't, I don't care what you do. You can take as little or as many steps as you want. It doesn't matter. I want to see the answer. I want to see algebra. Okay, hey, Mr. Park, this is, this is like a line right here. So bring it over. 14a minus 2b equals 16 divided by 2. 7a minus b equals 7. No acceptance. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's one set of equations. Now, if I, if, if I want to solve something with two variables, I need two equations. So what do I do now once I get this? Do the other one. Yeah, so you either do these two or the first one equal to the third one. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. So I'll leave it to you. You guys got to practice. I can do this in my sleep. You guys got to do this when you're awake. No, I'm serious. This is just algebra. That's all it is. It's writing out algebra. Just wait till you see the one on the practice test. Mm. That one's going to be even juicier. Come on, algebra never hurt no one. Okay. And then finally, number nine. Oh, no, this is the one. This is the one right here. How many people got number nine? One person, two, P, three. How many of people are beating it for the first time now? I don't want to even see that. <laughs> Number nine. Hey, it's up to you, people. But I'm telling you right now, you guys don't practice. It's going to be pain. Is that why the first average of the first test is 64 every year? No. Yes. Because people don't practice the algebra. They think, oh, I get them already. I already, <laughs> yeah. I already took two years of algebra. I get them. And then they take the yeah. test. Fatal error, fatal error, fatal error, fatal error. 53 or whatever it's, it's going to That's what happens. Okay, zero, zero. See, look, I went easy on you. I made one of the coordinates zero, zero. It makes it so easy. B, one, comma, two. C is five, comma, four. Okay? So trapezoid A, B, C, D. So it looks something like this, right? But we don't know the coordinates of D. So what do you want to call it? X, Y? J, K? JT. 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 Okay, JT. 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 <laughs> yeah. That don't even. Wait, why are we doing JK? How about HK? Isn't that what Mr. Rubash likes to use? HK? Uh, Who had yeah. Mr. Rubash? So he liked to use HK, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, in honor of Mr. Rubash. Exactly. Okay, now let's start writing equations. This is an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, what is a trapezoid? One parallel. That means this is parallel to that. And what does isosceles mean? That is equal to this side equals that side, right? Mm -hmm. It's a nice. So we can write equations. If this side is parallel to that side, slope the slopes equal. must be equal. Now, how do you find the slope between these two points? Y minus Y over X minus X. That's easy because it's zero, right? So K over H is equal to, how do I compute this slope? y minus y over x minus x. 2 over 4 is 1 half. <laughs> okay, that's one equation. You just got one point. But we need another equation. If there's two variables, you need two equations. If you have three variables, you need three equations. Okay, so what's the other equation I should write? It's in the picture, people. This side is equal to that side. So what does that mean? Distance formula. Use the distance formula. The distance from here to here must be equal to the distance from there to there. So let's do it. This distance, the square root of h <laughs> minus 5 squared plus k minus 4 squared is equal to this distance, which is the square root of 5. There you go. You got another point. You want the other six points? Solve it. Okay, you want me to start, start you on this? So this equation here, look, what would, if I were me, I would cross multiply and you get h equals 2k. Now on this side, square both sides and you get? Square both sides and you get? h squared. h minus 5 squared plus k minus 4 squared. I'm not going to do the whole thing for you. I'm just setting it up for you. Now what, what do you think I'm going to do? 
If h equals 2k, what do you think is going to replace? Substitute. I'm going to substitute h equals 2k, and then look, you just have an equation with one variable now. I think it gets consolidated. This is algebra one now. So you, the, oh, okay, you substituted the k. Yeah, yeah h equals k. k. It's called substitution, okay. right? That's what you want, right? You want an equation with just one variable, because that's algebra one. And then can you guys take it from there? A hand off the bottom, you're you going to score a touchdown, or you're going to fumble it? The line has to be. Fumble it right now, or you're going to fumble it right before the goal line? <laughs> Which is one point. I don't know. That's why you guys got to practice. Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Park. This is a quadratic equation, but come on with two answers then. That's right. It's going to be two answers, except one, one of them you're going to have to cross out. Because if you look at the bottom, there's only one answer, right? How come there's two answers? Because what are the conditions we imposed on this? This side is parallel to that side, and this side got to equal this side, right? So wouldn't there be another point like right there that satisfies those two equations? But that one we've got to cross out. You know why? It doesn't make an isosceles trapezoid. It makes a parallelogram. So that's why we've got to cross that one out. In fact, let's see if we you learned what you can do what we learned today. Tell me, just by looking at this, what are the coordinates of that point right there? Okay, who am I calling on here? Simon! Uh, or Simon? Simon. Simon? Simon? Two. Uh, now. Hmm. Wait, what is the point? Because look, this form, okay. If this is a parallelogram, remember, to get from this point to this point, you got to go four right and two up, right? So to get from this point to that point, you also got to go four right and two up. So? Four comma two. Four comma two. There you go. But that's the one that gets crossed out. You want this other one. And for those of those three people that did the problem, it didn't come out that pretty. Yeah. Those, of you, those of you reading the problem for the first time now, just... Good luck. All right. So you can see, even though the, the concepts that you need are simple, right? Because all you needed for the homework was distance formula, slope formula, and midpoint formula. Look at all the work you have to do. Like, I'm telling you, in this class, PCH, the H stands for something. Right now, it's like, huh? Hi. <laughs> yeah. Question. Do you care for answers or decimals and fractions? No. But then since you're doing it, because no calculator, yeah? So since you're doing it on calculator, probably fractions are better, right? Because you don't want to work with decimals, right? If you're good at working by hand. Would you rather work with this decimal, 2.875, or would you rather work with 2 and 7 eighths? Either way. They both look in No, this look. <laughs> then what if you got to multiply it times something? That's crazy. That one's easy. Yeah, without a calculator, you want to work with fractions. That, that's, but it's up to you. Mr. Park, I'm good at multiplication. I like that school. Then go ahead and make my day. Okay, this is what you gotta, we got to learn now. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa. How much time do we have? Oh, but we, i got to pass out the test. Oh, you uh, let me make a comment on the test. The, the both class averages were 94. Yay. But then usually it's 95. But that's a nice thing. What does that mean? I, mean, it's I don't know what that means. Wait, some people get hundreds. Oh, no. Yeah, there are hundreds. Oh, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> I think there are only two or three hundreds. You know why? One of the true false problems stump people, that's why. Uh, but I'm not going to say it on the camera. <laughs> Sorry, but no. Okay. Anyway, do you know why we go over the test at the end of the period and not before, at the beginning of class? Because sometimes when I pass out the test, like for example this chapter, this next chapter, every, you're going to look at the score and you're going to get all depressed, yeah. and then you're not going to listen to the new lesson, and then you just don't have a oh, magic circle that happens. That's why we always go over the test at the end of class. That way you get depressed and you go to the next class. Oh. 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 Or whatever. What if you're like... Okay, can we do this now? Tonight's homework, now you're going to actually write equations of lines. Now you're going to write. Now, there are four forms of lines that we learned over our math career so far, right? The first one is this one. AX plus BY plus C equals zero. This is all in your notes, people. What form is that called? Standard. 
<laughs> it rhymes with mineral. It's general form. And it's really not that useful, except it looks nice, yeah? So if you make one side zero and throw everything else on the other side, that's called general form. What form is this? Y equal mx plus b. That's called point slope form. No, it's not. It's called slope intercept form. That's the one you first learned in algebra one, right? This is the slope, and that's the y intercept. What about this? Y minus y1 equal m times x minus x1. That is slope intercept form. You're going to find that this is probably the fastest no, one. No, this is the fastest one right there. And then the last one is x over a plus y over b equal 1. The first time you've seen it was in algebra 2, but maybe you didn't even use it, but don't worry in this class we will. What is that called? The conics. Now, some of you, I know, some of you, every year, students go, isn't that an ellipse? Every year there's at least one person. Isn't that an ellipse? Well, if there was a square there, yeah, yeah, yeah. then it would be an ellipse. But no, there's no square. That's a line. Do you guys understand why they call this intercept form? This is the x-intercept. That is the y-intercept. Wow. You guys even know why it works? That sounds okay, let me show, okay, let's go back to algebra 2. x over 3 plus y over 2 equals 1. You know, intercept form is good. You know why? What if I ask you to graph this? It's so easy. X intercept 3, Y intercept 2, <laughs> Now somebody tell me, why, why is it that the number underneath the X is the X intercept? Well, how do you find the X intercept of any graph? Y is you y set is Y equal to 0. Now what would happen if I set Y equal to 0? You get this, solve for X. Three. Three. That's why it works. Oh. See, what, isn't that better knowing how it works than just memorize the thing in the book? Yeah. Take the quiz and then purge it. <laughs> That's what you guys are used to, you know? And then same thing, how do you find the y-intercept? Set x equal to 0, solve for y, 2. That's why it works. OK, so when you read a problem, you've got to decide, OK, what's, the, what's like the fastest way to, I mean, what's the best, which, which form is the best to use to solve the problem? Yeah? Oh, uh, what happens when the intercepts are 0? Then you can't use this one, yeah? <laughs> yeah. OK, like for example, look at number 8. Write the equation of the lines. See, that's a hint already, you get more than one answer that passes through to point 0.43 so that the area of the triangle formed by the line and the coordinate axis is 27 square units. See, that problem there, you want to use this one. Because look, a line passes through to point 0.4,3 and the area of this triangle is 27. Why would I want to use the intercept form? Because that'll give you two versions. Because that represents the x-intercept, and that represents the y-intercept. That's why you want to use that one. So that's why you got to read the problem and figure this out. Now, look at number one. Now, this is something from geometry. Now, we're talking about the circumcenter and the orthocenter. Now, I'm looking at the time. I'm not going to go through it, OK? I will just do one of the, I'll, I'll tell you how to set up the problems here. Let's do B, the orthocenter. Now let's say I give you a triangle. Give me some give me some vertices quickly. Five, four. Five. Okay, let's put it closer to R again. One, <laughs> two, three. One, six. Okay, you know what? How close do you want? Okay, let's just go, let's make it Oregon. Zero, okay. zero, man. And then here's B, what, seven, comma, two. And then here's C over here. How about four, comma, six? Okay, here's a triangle. Compute the coordinates of the orthocenter. Now, if you look at the problem, I tell you how to compute all these things, so you don't have to look it up. Now, what the heck is the orthocenter? Well, if you read, the orthocenter is the intersection of the altitudes of a triangle. Now, what the heck is an altitude? An altitude goes from the vertex, and it's perpendicular to the opposite side. It's the height of the triangle, altitude. How many altitudes of a tri does a triangle have? It has three. So what about this one here? So from here, you make it perpendicular to the opposite side. And then from here, you make it perpendicular to the opposite side. And hey, what do you know? They all intersect at the same point. That always happens. And you know what we call this point? The orthocenter. Orthocenter. I think I told you guys this in summer school here in my class. What, where have you heard the word ortho before? Orthodontist. Ortho in mathematics means perpendicular. You know why? Like an orthodontist, here's your gum. Do you want your teeth to grow perpendicular to the gum? Or parallel to the gum? <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Perpendicular. Orthodontics. What about ortho plant food, fertilizer? Oh, yeah. You guys ever work in the yard? Yeah, yeah, you want your plant to go perpendicular to the ground. <laughs> or you want parallel to the ground. <laughs> ortho means perpendicular. Okay, so tonight's homework, you're going to have to compute the coordinates of this ortho center. So, how do you do that? I'm going to set it up for you. I'm not going to do it. So, what do you do? You write the equation of one altitude. It doesn't matter. And write an equation of another. Do I have to do all three? No, because they all intersect at the same point. So pick any two of these altitudes, write the equations, and find where they intersect. So again, you're, going, you're doing a lot of algebra. McCall. How do you find the, since one of the points on the altitude is a vertex, how do you find the other point? No, 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 no. Okay, I'm going to show you right here. Okay, which altitude do you want to do? The one from A, the one from B, or the one from C? C. <laughs> okay, I would do A, you know why? Zero, zero. You get zero, so it's a hard one. Okay, now what two things do you need to write an equation on the line? You need a point and a slope. We got the point already. All you got to do is figure out the slope. Well, all I know is this is perpendicular to that. So what you got to do is you got to find the slope of BC and then make negative reciprocal, right? Because it's perpendicular. So how do you find the slope of BC? Y minus Y, 4 over x minus x, negative 3. There you go. Can everybody do that? Mm -hmm. Therefore, what is the slope of this, then, which is perpendicular to 3 fourths? Three fourths. So the fact, to me, the fastest way to write an equation of a line is to use point slope form. So here we go. y minus 0. So here's the point. There's the slope. y minus 0 equals 3 fourths times x minus 0. Bam. So that's one altitude. Now I have to do another one. Which one do you want to do, the one from B or the one from C? Pick one and go with it. B. Okay, the one from B. So I have a point. Now I need to figure out the slope, but since it's perpendicular, I have to figure out this slope. So how do I do that? Y minus Y over X minus X. What is that? 6 over 4, which reduces to? 3 halves. Three halves. Therefore, what is this slope that's perpendicular to? Negative, negative 2 thirds. So there's the slope. That's the point. Y minus 2 equals negative 2 thirds X minus 7. Boom. Point slope form. And then all you have to do now is figure out where they intersect. Then what, what do you think you're going to do? Substitution. Y equals 3 fourths X. Take that, plug it in there, and then solve it. It's algebra. Okay, but I'm going to show you a math team secret. Okay? This is what I do. Like what, I, I don't do this. Watch what I do. Okay, so when, when I do this line, I see the slope is 3 fourths. This is what I do. I write 3x minus 4y. It passes through the point 0, 0. Plug in 0 here, 0 there, you get 0. Damn. That's the first line. OK? If I write the equation of this line, the slope is negative 2 thirds. So I write 2x plus 3y. But they got to pass through the point 7, 2. So if I plug in 7 there and 2 there, you get 14 plus this. So that's 20. <laughs> you guys see what I did? Yeah. See, that way you can use the addition subtraction method. Now, do you guys understand what I did? Look, uh, did your teacher teach you this last year? If the equation is written in general form, the slope is negative a over b. No. OK, then that's why you're not understanding what I'm showing you there. See? The slope is 3 fourths. That's why I, that's why I write 3x minus 4 what? Because negative a over b is 3 fourths. And then I just mentally plug in this point to figure out that number over there. But it's up to you. I don't, I don't care what you do. You just got to write it. I would guess 90% of you are just going to do points slope form, and that's perfectly fine. OK, so if you solve these two equations, you will get the ortho center. So that's what you have to do on your homework. Now, let me just mention one more thing before I pass on the test. If I give you an equation of a line, here's something like this. Uh, 3x minus 4y, give me a number, plus Seven. 10 <laughs> equals 0. And then if you have a point, give me a coordinate of a point. 4, 5. 4, 5. How do you find the distance between the line and the point? Now, when we talk about the distance between a line and a point, which distance are we talking about? Because there's so many different distances. When you talk about the distance between a point and any graph, you're talking about the shortest possible distance. That would be this. Now, think about it. What if you're in a Turkish prison? 
The only way that you can escape, the guard will let you go, is if you complete that distance. What would you do? What could you do? Well, let me ask you this. Can you write the equation of this line right here, since it's perpendicular? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then if you write the equation of this line and you know this line, can you find where they intersect? Yeah. 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 So if you figure out this point, how do I figure out that distance? Just use the distance formula. Yeah, well, Mr. Park, that's so much work. Yes, it is quite a bit of work. But luckily, if you look in the notes, I, I'm giving you a formula. This is the formula to find the distance between a point and a line. Here it is. It's the score. Absolute value of AX1 plus BY1 plus C all over the square root of A squared plus B squared. Have you seen this formula before? No. Okay, no. I'm going to tell you in this class, this formula is going to come up quite a bit. Yeah, but Mr. Park, look at all these variables. Well, look, what do you think A, B, and C are? This, A, B, and C. Those are the coefficients of the line. Yeah. So the line has to be written in general form. And what do you think this x1 and y1 is? I mean, if you have to guess, what do you think it is? It's the coordinates of the point. So this is A, B, and C. That's x1 and y1. Just plug it into that formula. It's a really nice formula. So watch. Absolute value of 3 times x1. What is x1? 4 minus 4 times y1, 5 plus c, all over the square root of three, uh, a squared plus b squared. There you go, look. Whatever number that comes out to, that's the distance between the line and the point. So let's compute this now, we just got to crunch. 12 minus 20 plus 10, what is that? Rhymes with moon. Two, and what's the square root of nine plus 16? Rhymes with high. Five. five, there you go. The distance right there is two fifths. Isn't that a lot faster than, I'm going to write the equation of this line, I'm going to find where they intersect, and then I'm going to use the distance formula. Yes, it's way faster. But then again, you've got to memorize the formula. That's the thing. All right, we've got nine minutes remaining. Let me pass back the test.